issue of like sovereignty, 13th Amendment, I think that the other part that that struck me was when we get into the Reconstruction Amendments and African-Americans get the right to vote finally, that does apply to Africans in, in the Indian Territory. It doesn't. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, but that's sort of this weird gray area, right? It's like the, the native population can't vote, so African Americans in, in the Indian Territory are also consider it native, right? Or wh where would they fit in this identity identity of, of the 15th Amendment? Well, they're considered, yes, tribal citizens. So they win the right to vote in the treaties of 1866, along with, um, you know, they're supposed to have all the rights that every tribal citizen has, every Indian citizen. But I've, I've talked to this with people, um, about this with people like Dave Fryer, and I just kind of asked, like, if these people were to go into the United States, would they then have all of those rights, kind of, that um, the amendments are granting to African Americans? And he said he thinks so because they would not necessarily be, um, you could not tell a freedman from an African-American, like they would both look black to someone um, and they don't have the kind of bureaucratic systems like, um, you know, birth certificates, um, those are coming later. So if they go into the United States, they have those rights, but in Indian territory, I think in many ways they're, yeah, they're classified as native people. Um, and Native Americans, I mean, as you said, they don't get the right to vote um, until 1924, generally um, in various spaces like New England, and they've gotten it kind of over time um, with Indian Territory, they gain the right to vote um, basically with the Dawes Act. So as they get land allotments and are kind of made American citizens through that process.